Okay, so can you guys see it? Yes, we can. Okay, great. So I'll start with introducing myself. So my name is Serhi and I'm about nine years in Android development and uh, about six years here in SoftServe. And uh, since this summer, I haven't faced with real cases on the real projects when I was forced to decompile and analyze uh, my own APK. So um, I make uh, a deep dive into that theme and today I want to share with you guys uh, my knowledge. So um, why it doesn't work? Okay, so um, the term that describes process of the compiling and analyzing project is uh, reverse engineering actually, so we will use it today pretty often. So uh, there are a bunch of different uh, reasons to reverse engineer your project and uh, I split them uh, in legal and illegal reasons. Let's start with legal ones. So sometimes um, you need to extract some resources or business logic or something else from your old APK, which source code you already lost. Uh, usually it's more uh, appropriate for enterprise engineer because their sphere like is much bigger and much older than Android development. But overall, uh, with growing of Android development, uh, it could be the case for us as well. Um, also, you may need to uh, analyze uh, logic of source party libraries, for example, if, um, if the documentation is not exhausted and you can't understand something, you may need to look inside and understand what's going on there. And actually the third case, it's actually my case, it's possible to, um, to look into your released APK to figure out if it used some restricted APIs or features. Um, also, and this is probably most often used case, uh, you may need to analyze security issues and vulnerabilities uh, just to figure out if you, uh, if you like provide enough um, protection for your sensitive data. Uh, and now let's go to illegal reasons. So uh, the first one is obviously looking for some sensitive information like API keys, uh, secret tokens, user inf uh, information, API calls and stuff like that. And of course, modifying or patching your application when someone could add, um, uh, maybe enable debugging or translate your application or in worst case, just uh, remove the advertisement or uh, even add some malware into your APK. So we will look deeper inside those. Um, so before reverse engineer something, first of all, we need to remember uh, and revise what is APK is. So I believe since we all engineers, we all know that APK is simple zip archive, um, which structure in a way uh, understandable for Dalvik virtual machine. It includes Android manifest XML, uh, which is actually the final version of uh, manifest version. Uh, and it is binary, uh, binary XML format, so you can't read it using um, text editors or stuff like that. Also, it's classes DEX. Uh, actually, this is compiled uh, Java code. Uh, you, can, you may have more than one classes DEX in your APK depending on the side of your project. So if you enable a multi-DEX flag in your uh, Gradle config, you will see more than one classes DEX probably. Uh, resources IRC is pre-compiled resources where you can find stuff like uh, some constants, strings, uh, ints, IDs, etc. So everything which should, which require a compiler. Res folders, on the other hand, in, uh, includes uh, drawable, uh, drawables, and drawables XMLs and stuff like that. So it also, uh, if this is XMLs, they also would be. Um, in binary format, so they also unreadable, but uh, you may extract PNGs. Lib folder, uh, this folder includes uh, code implemented using NDK. Uh, usually this is C, C++ libraries or game engines if we're talking about game development. Assets folder is pretty same as we're using during development, so nothing additional. 
And meta inf includes some additional data about the project, like uh, certificates or signatures and stuff like that. So it's not really interesting for us. Um, so uh, when we're working on the project as from engineering standpoint, we are writing code in Java and Kotlin and then translating it into uh, Delvic executable bytecode format. Uh, what do you see here on the uh, animation? On the other hand, when you uh, want to reverse engineer something, you need to go in opposite direction. And here on this uh, second image, you may see some additional thing, which is smiley actually. We're not working with it when we implemented the code. So what is this? Um, in general, smiley or back smiley are, um, are tools. It's actually assembler or disassembler for um, for Android SDK. Uh, but when we're talking about reverse engineering Android project, term and Smiley uh, used to, um, to describe the actually assembler language uh, between Java and Dex by code. So let's go ahead and look into a small example. Here you can see the simple Kotlin method which just initialize uh, a banner. So nothing interesting, just three lines of code in Kotlin, but let's look at the Smiley code. Uh, it's pretty huge and pretty unreadable, as you may consider. Uh, by the way, if you're interested in some details, I put a few links, one for official documentation and another one like for non-official one, which includes only most important uh, comments from the Smiley language. So um, here you can see that Smiley is much harder to read than simple Java or the compiled Java. And actually what you have seen here, it's not all method. I just uh, leave only lines which are really meaningful for us. Um, so let's go ahead and try to understand one line. So the line 43 is just simple writing field into, uh, uh, writing a view into add view field yeah, of main activity. So first of all, we are taking a value of uh, ID, then we passing it to find view by, by ID, then we saw a few static invokes of some inner methods, cast, and after that, writing everything to this, uh, to this field, actually. So uh, if you need to read it, it's pretty hard. I believe that everyone agree with that. Uh, Maybe you may read it, of course, if you're familiar with assembler, but it's definitely not my case. Um, so the good news here is you actually shouldn't do that. And we have good tools for avoid this part of, of thing. But anyway, we need to look into it for future. Okay. And finally, let's come to application entry points. So uh, usually reverse engineers have pretty um, concrete aims or goals, yeah? So they want, for example, to disable ads banner on your screen or maybe add uh, some logs or something like that. So usually they're not interested in all your projects. They just need to find particular place to change or to look into. So um, usually they will start from those application entry points which actually uh, common Android components is activities, services, broadcast receivers, also it could be content providers and application subclasses. Of course, the best case would be um, open application and start digging from launcher activity and just then go ahead till the moment when they can update your app. And that makes even more sense because typical procward rule config looks like that. So you actually avoid in shrinking uh, and obfuscation of those core components. So they would be in a most readable case and in a most readable state for reverse engineer. That's why they will start from this point. Actually, they will start from an uh, Android manifest, but yeah. Okay, and now uh, if you want to to protect yourself from reverse engineer, first of all, you need to think like reverse engineer. So here you can find some tips, which is used by real reverse engineers. So first of all, they uh, try to pay their attention on, on their concrete goal. They won't try to analyze and understand all your code, all your code just uh, everything which related to their particular task. Actually, like we did when we trying to 
dig uh, a bug or something like that. But their work even harder because we have debuggers, we have our real source, source codes, while they just using Smelly or the compiled Java, which is harder. Uh, next one, the API calls. So uh, the most important behaviors in Android app usually uh, come uh, together with API calls. So they could uh, went to the place when you're making your calls or set of calls and start to dig in from this point. And of course, the application entry points, which we just uh, <clears throat> which we uh, show just a minute ago. So uh, let's go to the tools for reverse engineering. Uh, I would split them into three different groups: is API, APK extraction tools, uh, basic reverse engineering tools, which allow you to analyze static code, but you can't update it or build it. Uh, and advanced reverse engineering tools, and those could be used for actually patching your APK. And they're like the most, uh, the most harder and like the most um, dangerous for us. So let's go ahead and look into API extraction tools. Actually, there are a bunch of tools. Uh, I put here only three, but in general, we can live only with Adib Shell, which is uh, console toolkit and I believe that all of you are familiar with that and this tool just don't have any restrictions and doesn't require any anything else like root or something like that. You can just extract application from the device. But anyway, uh, APK Instructor, this is application from Play Store. Uh, you can install it to your device and after that you can grab any APK which already installed. It will be saved on the SD card. APK downloader is the Chrome plugin, uh, which allow you to download APK to install it separately. So let's look into the best shell in more details because I believe for us engineers is the best choice. So all you need to do is just write two commands. First of all, it's just, uh, you need to see list of all installed packages that you select interest package and just write adb pool with package name. After that, uh, base apk file will be pulled uh, to the your adb directory on your computer. And you can go ahead and do whatever you want. Uh, so now let's go ahead and look about uh, and look into basic tools. So first of all, it's apk analyzer. As you all probably know, starting Android Studio 3 or something like that was added uh, APK analyzer. It's actually a built-in tool and it allows you to make uh, like the start things from reverse engineering. Also, you can use JADX GUI or DEX to JAR plus G GUI. Those tools actually allow you to decompile uh, and disassemble your APK or JAR into the compiled Java, actually, which is much more readable in a comparison with Smell. And actually it has some more features for working with code. Uh, let's look into APK analyzer. Uh, you can see the example here on uh, screenshot. So as I said, this is built in feature in Android Studio. Uh, to see APK, actually to the compile and analyze APK, all you need to do is just drag APK into your Android Studio screen and it will open this tool. Uh, it includes few features, for example, uh, view file and size information, understand uh, the composition of DEX files, comparing APK files, but they are not interesting for us. So let's uh, look into the other ones. So first of all, you can uh, view the Android manifest XML. It's absolutely easy and uh, you just don't need to do anything. You just uh, click on Android manifest and you will see the resulting file. This is, uh, by the way, very good approach and very good thing, which you can do every day or after every commit because it show you um, the result in manifest and you can see some unexpected permissions, for example, or activities which you don't need, but they could be added by some third party libraries or maybe by even your code which you just missed. So it's always the good idea to check. 
Uh, next one, it allows you to view uh, DEX files and its hierarchy inside of it, and actually show by code. It's exact, uh, exactly what you see on the screenshot. So here I'm looking into classes DEX, uh, package epic k analyzer demo, and I want to show you the bytecode for on create method. So everything is pretty straightforward and lists one thing. Um, actually, it doesn't allow you to work with code. And of course, it can show you the code and resources entities. So you can go to resource ARC or any other resource file. So now let's talk about pros and cons of using PK Analyzer. So it advantages. Uh, it's built-in feature for Android Studio, so you don't need any additional work to install it. Uh, it gives you easy access to all resources and to Android Manifest. But uh, it has pretty poor uh, functions for working with code. So it doesn't support search in classes DEX, it doesn't allow modification, and uh, it doesn't support jumping between classes methods, you know, like we all did when we press in control and then uh, on the method. So this this is just doesn't work. So if you find some class, especially uh, obfuscated class, yeah, and you want to look inside, uh, you have to remember pass and then manually go to this place. This is completely uh, unusable. So what we can say about APK Analyzer, this is rather development tool uh, because it allow you only to look into the resources and don't have any, um, any options to work with the decompiled code. But it actually uh, pretty useful when you're working with your own APK and you're working with your code base. So you just won't face with this, those problems because you have the source codes and you can move in between them as you want. So, uh, but if you want to work with different uh, APK or third party APK, we need another tool. So let's go ahead and look into Jodex GUI. Uh, as you can see on the screenshot, it looks like Eclipse. Um, and actually, this is third party, uh, third party tool, which uh, allow you to actually decompile uh, bytecode into the compiled Java, which is, as you also can see, it's much more readable than smelly code. And you can read and analyze it. In general, there are two tools, one for command line and one with graphic user interface, but uh, we're mostly interested in graphic user interface today. Uh, so uh, what feature it includes? Um, it allows you to decompile Dalvik back code. Um, also, it decodes Android manifest and other resources. It also includes uh, the obfuscator. Uh, and of course, it, it has additional uh, features for working with code, like moving between codes, searching in project. And by the way, I used this tool for working with my uh, ticket, which I described at the very beginning. So it was very easy. And yeah, by the way, uh, again, all you need to do to decompile APK here is just drag and drop it into the project and nothing more. And now let's go ahead and talk about process and causes. So again, advantages is ability to decompile everything and especially the readability of the compiler Java in comparison with the SMATIC code. Also, this is access to some resources and Android manifest, and of course, additional feature for working with code. But it still has some disadvantages. So first of all, this is a third party tool. So you need to download it, you need to find it and stuff like that. And actually uh, I wasn't able to find it fast. Yeah, cause if you don't know about it, you probably <laughs> won't find it easy. Okay, uh, and also it also doesn't allow any modification. So you can look into code, you can touch it, but you can't modify anything and you can't build anything. Um, so this tool is pretty uh, pretty useful for the compiling and analyzing actually third party uh, APKs when you don't have the source code and you can't look into real Java. Yeah, you can look into the compiled one, so it's much easier. 
and actually typical uh, reverse engineers doing that. So first of all, they decompile it using JADX GUI or something like that. Then they analyze it, looking uh, places that should be changed. And only after that, they are trying to modify the SMALI code. We will look into that a bit later. So um, now we will look into, into a simple example. I've created a sample project, which could be downloaded in, on GitHub. Actually, it does nothing interesting. It just, uh, it has only one activity. Actually, it has two activity launcher as well. So it just ablaze few uh, API calls with different tokens and, um, and show the banner ad. So on this example, we will look uh, how to use APK analyzer and JADX GUI and we will look into token storage problem with, which is quite important, I think. And also we will try to figure out what we need to do to disable this banner ads, banner ad on the screen. So let's start. Uh, first of all, I will show the code to show the difference. Okay, so as you saw, uh, I emulate four different API calls using different um, secret tokens, which I save in a different way. So first one is actually simple constant in activity. And actually it doesn't matter whether, where exactly this constant would be stored in what file I mean. Uh, also, I've added case store properties for the secret token number two. It's enabled using uh, build Gradle. Here you can see I'm open the file and here I get in the value. Then in main activity, it's get like this. Uh, it's just build config. What it is? Yeah, here we go. This is the place. Um, the third token stored inside resources. And the first one is the most interested because it is get from native library. So I added native library, which provide for me some secret tokens and some secret uh, information. And now let's go to the JADX GUI and see, will we able to find them or not? So let's imagine that we are reverse engineers. And first of all, we need to do is just start find the launcher activity. So here it is. Intent filter, this is splash screen activity. In splash screen activity, we very easy can find a uh, place when we're launching the main activity. So as you can see, it is here, yeah? Uh, by the way, this, uh, this APK is obfuscated, so that's why you see some weird names, stuff like that. So let's go to main activity and look. Probably we need to go and check the layout. So it's activity main, nothing interesting, so go ahead. Yeah, and in activity main, we see all buttons. And of course, using those IDs, we can easily find what exactly we are doing here in main activity. So in general, we see here four uh, nested classes. Each nested classes make uh, the API call, as we can see. And by the way, here we go, uh, nested class one, and we see the secret token. Uh, second, and this is secret token, which is stored inside uh, key stores. And D, we see that secret token, secret token is coming from resources. So go ahead and try to grab it from resources. Okay, strings, and here it is. So this is the value which we are looking for. So you may see that all those three ways of storing the data are not safe at all. And the only one token which we wasn't able to grab is a token stored in the native library. If we will go to 
a PK analyzer, which is open already, we can try and look deeper. So here you can see the main activity and those are nested classes. So let's look into their smiley code. So again, this is the same stuff. You can found all secret tokens absolutely easy. And again, everything except native, because you can see here then that native method not even shown in this place. So we can make a conclusion that um, the native uh, way to store keys is the most um, protected from all we can use to store some secret tokens inside our application. But unfortunately, it also could be decompiled. Here in the lib folder, you can find this file. File It could be easily decompiled with some decompiler for C++ or for the C. And after that, uh, the person which knew how to do that can easily get access to your key. But this, of course, requires some additional efforts and some additional knowledge. But this is not also the final way to do this. Also, for example, here in application, if you know how to modify the project, you can put flag debuggable true. And using this flag, you can just debug this application and get the secret token. So <laughs> here is final conclusion. If you have the secret token, try to not store them in your PK. Okay, so let's go ahead to our main goal, actually, the second one. We want to disable banner add on the main activity. We again, we're going to uh, XML layout and found the add view. Here it comes. And let's go ahead and try what exactly going on with this view inside main activity. So we may find that um, in onCreate, we are calling this obfuscated method. And inside it, we are, can find all code related to those banners. So in general, we can remove or this code or, or this method, or just few if sta statements for it. Unfortunately, we can't do it using uh, Jadex GUI or Android Studio. By the way, let's go ahead and look into Smiley code. So this is Smiley code for on create method and here it go. Here you go. This is the only one line of code which we need to remove. Or we can go directly to this method. This is much harder. Yeah, as you can see, it's harder to read and understand what's going on here, but we still can update it later. Okay, so for now, uh, Let's return back to our presentation. And summarize what we have right now. So uh, the reverse engineering workflow consists from these three points. And now we have enough instrument for working with this. We have Adobe Shell to extract APK, APK analyzer, and Jadex GUI to get a smiley code or to compile Java and to work with them later. But when we, if we want to uh, patch an APK or make any changes, we need some additional tool set because as we can see here, we just can't do it. And so first of all, we need to modify smiley somehow. Then we need to build smiley and sign it. And sign actually new uh, APK because without signing, as you all know, we can't just install the APK into device. So yeah, now let's go ahead and look into 
advanced tools which we need in order to do this. So in general, we need four tools. First of all, it's adding a zip archiver uh, to unzip our APK. Then we need to Smiley. And this time we're talking about particular tools. I mean, Smiley or back Smiley, uh, which allow us to actually disassemble uh, our uh, bytecode. Uh, AAPT, this is tool used by Android Studio in order to uh, build and package your resources and XM Android XML, Android manifest XML. Uh, also, you may need APK, uh, APK signer, which is also part of Android SDK build tools and also could be used separately. So all those tools are command lines tools and Honestly, it's pretty hard to work with them all. I did try and actually <laughs> I almost broke my head. So um, there are different tools which combines everything except signer and it's very popular in reverse engineers community. And this is APK tool. So according to the documentation, APK tool is a tool for reverse engineering, but without any intention for privacy and other non-legal uses. So uh, its features, it allows us to disassemble resources to nearly original forms. It allows us to disassemble uh, bytecode as well. So after using uh, APK tool, we will get access to all resources, classes, decks, nine patches, and everything else. And also it allows us to build it again to a new APK or jar file. Uh, also, it allows you to handle uh, framework dependencies. So in terms of APK tool, those frameworks are um, some kind of Android SDK dependencies. Yeah, so you can, uh, your application, I mean the best base one, which was disassembled, they, they had some dependencies on Android framework. So this framework stuff is actually managing it and using it you can uh, build wherever you want. Uh, but APK tool doesn't support signing packages, that should be done manually. So unfortunately signing and working with frameworks is out of scope of this uh, presentation, but it's not so hard to do, especially signing. I believe if someone is pretty experienced enough, he may sign something during his career. At least it's the very beginning of Android. Okay, so uh, what is APK tool in general? Um, this is console tool. Um, and it has just few interesting for us uh, commands. It's the coding command on actually decompile. It is could be uh, launched by using D or decode command. And after that, uh, you will get uh, a folder which it includes all content of APK that you want to decode. Uh, we interested in those three uh, components actually. We interested in resource folder, which obviously includes all the compiler resources that could be modified. So here you can change layout, you can uh, translate the application and do whatever you want. Uh, Smiley, this is, actually the same as Java or Kotlin folder when you work it uh, with your project. So this is folder which includes packages and with packages it also um, uh, uses smiley classes. And this time those classes could be modified using any text editor. For example, you can use a smiley plugin for IntelliJ IDEA. And of course, Android manifest, which is also could be modified right now. So once you make your modifications, for example, as we said, removing one particular line of code or, or removing some uh, if statements from our um, demo application, we can now build. To build it, all we need to do is just write one sample command. Yeah, apk2 b or apk2 build. After that, you will get new application, uh, new application, um, and all you need to do is just sign it, and after that, it could it is ready to install. So now we have everything for reverse engineering process. Yeah. So, at a shell, we are extracting APK. 
And we're using Jadex GUI to decompile by code and look into it to search some places that could be updated. Uh, then we use an APK tool to uh, decompile uh, our APK using any text editor to make changes. And then use APK tool to uh, compile new APK, new version. After that, it could be installed or after that you need to sign it and then it could be installed or on the device or it could be um, uploaded into some uh, some stores <laughs> yeah okay so uh, if any of you are interested in those um, activity and you read such forums as for PDA or XPDA, you might see that reverse engineering community are pretty, pretty huge and uh, there are a bunch of people who do not hesitate to modify the others projects and look into them and make some changes. So let's look into a few things which could be modified uh, by them. So the most obvious is translation there. And this is like not bad, yeah. So if we don't have enough time, it's even good for us if someone translate. Uh, but they also could disable advertising, which I, for example, faced. The first our project in SoftServe uh, was hacked and advertising from it was removed. And yeah, it, it was painful for us. Uh, also those guys uh, for like, for more complex attack, they could enable debugging uh, as I show at the uh, example. Yes, you could just add Android debuggable true to your Android manifest and after this moment, it's possible to debug your application to see some key key points or uh, uh, key API keys or stuff like that. So they also can add logs or what most harmful probably is, you could um, replace function which verifies your SSL certificates and get uh, and after that it's possible to make man in the middle attack on your application and extract again some sensitive data and of course they could add some malware into your apk as well because you can't protect from that can't be protected in any case so um uh here you can find some suggestions uh and some like things which you could you can use to protect yourself from reverse engineering. So first of all, <laughs> as we saw on example, just try not to store your sensitive information on the client side. So, and if you don't have another option, please use NDK, <laughs> always use NDK for that because at least it added some um, efforts. Um, so, also, if you're using any sensitive information, don't store it in unprotected data storages. Always use protected ones. Of course, if you save in, for example, retrieved weather data, it doesn't make any sense. But if you store in something related to user, for example, it's uh, account and its accounts, yeah, and its payment data, it's much better to use it uh, in, to use protected data storage because it's also pretty easy to extract and pretty easy to get, which I believe all you know. Uh, also, never store credentials on the phone file system. Every time force a user to authenticate using uh, st standard web or API login schemes. Use HTTPS and as I said, uh, always use uh, verifying SSL certificates. It's also adding some additional efforts and not modified guys want spend their time on that. Uh, and of course, use obfuscation. Um, you can use ProgWard or you can use DexGuard. This is actually a paid version of ProgWard. It gives you a bit more, um, more protection. It is harder to obfuscate. Uh, but of course, it's a bit harder to use than ProgWard. And also, uh, you can try to modif to obfuscate some critical points uh, actually manually. Of course, <laughs> it's definitely not a clean code, but you can name your important classes or uh, methods which you expect to be uh, reverse engineered uh, in not readable way. 
And this way, like this option of the of the obfuscation, uh, actually this option of obfuscation is does can't be deobfuscated. So it's very hard to understand what exactly going on here. Just imagine that person who uh, trying to reverse engineer your IPK just it don't have the normal code at all. And the bigger your project, the harder it find the place that should be modified. And if this place is unreadable, it makes his life even more hard, yeah. So try this stuff as well, if it's possible, of course. Uh, and sometimes try to reverse engineer your other projects in order to see uh, weaknesses. So, this way you can protect yourself. You can always understand that uh, level of efforts for you is always uh, much less than for your opponents. And yeah, here finally a uh, point. Uh, unfortunately, uh, as you can see from this presentation, all tools and all actual information about reverse engineering are in open uh, in open space, yes, yeah? so it's very easy to find and it's very easy to get. And actually, the majority of um, tools which is hard to use and which require additional knowledges, uh, they all provided by Google uh, with exhausted documentation. So, uh, unfortunately, for Android, it's like reverse engineering is pretty easy task. Yeah? Only one thing which can protect you is actually the complexity of your court and the complexity of the obfuscation of the everything else uh, is open and it's easy to use uh, so you need to always remember that uh, you don't need to try to guarantee full protection of your application it's impossible uh, all you may do is just uh, guarantee that uh, the more sensitive data you're using, the harder it would be to reverse engineer. So you just, your task is um, increase the level of efforts to reverse engineering, and that's it. For example, if you're not using any sensitive information, then just don't waste your time on that. Okay, and um, regarding some useful links, uh, you may found a bunch of different links in this presentation. I will share it later. Uh, and here I just add in uh, the most useful, which I think and I want like to suggest to read. So first of all, it's Android Applications Security. Uh, this is uh, two articles on the Medium. Actually, I'm adding a uh, link to the first one because it includes link to the second as well. Android Application Security Series by Aditya uh, Agrawal. Uh, this is a series of articles uh, related to security researchers and analyzers about actually uh, Android vulnerabilities. But it also could be helpful for us engineers in order to understand key vulnerabilities and the ways how to protect from them if it's possible. Also, it uh, may include some additional links. And the final one is Android uh, App Reverse Engineering is also a series of actual exercises of reverse engineering. So if you're interested and if you want to try yourself in that, please go ahead and look into that. And looks like that's it. I thought it would take much more time. So yeah, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate. Yeah, yes. hi. This is hey Alexander. Uh, just interesting how to use debuggable flag in Android manifest. So you said that if to place debug up true, you can debug it, but how you can debug without yeah. the actual source? Yeah, actually, um, I mentioned a uh, small plugin for IntelliJ IDEA. So in general, it works together with this plugin. Uh, you can set up uh, your um, you can update, you modify uh, Android manifest, and after that, you can set up breakpoint into smelly code in Android Studio. And after that, you will be able to, to see it and to debug. You can attach from Android Studio to any process which has um, enabled that um, yeah. um, flag, and after that, you can debug it exactly in smelly code. 
Yeah, it's actually exactly like you're doing with your regular call. Yeah, you can in Android Studio press just <laughs> particular button and it attach to process. So yeah. By the way, it looks like I had to add a link to this plugin as well. I just forgot about it. Yeah, I'll please share it with us. Yeah, okay. I will share it with everything else. 